Hey everyone! I just got back from a conference of STEM students at a university in Mexico. Uh, I'll leave the details in the description. They invited me there to give this speech and it was really well received, so I was hoping to upload it in its original form. Um, unfortunately, they weren't allowed to give out copies of the presentation. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't matter. I've modified it for my channel, so you can hear it now. Uh, a lot of this speech, uh, How to Question Social Institutions, will be about me. It's kind of the story of my life, or at least the second half of my life. The reason I'm going to tell you the story of my life is that my life is questioning social institutions. Sure, it's not the only thing I do. I like other stuff, like uh, dancing, eating chocolate, doing drugs, having sex, just like everybody else. I'm a normal guy. But when I'm finished, I like to learn and follow my curiosity. And nowadays, pretty much all my curiosity is directed at social institutions, like capitalism, the state, and the school, which you'll know if you already know this channel. Curiosity is actually key to learning to question things, at least in my opinion. And, and for that matter, it's probably key to learning anything. In a world with internet, you can read and listen to anyone you want, and you don't have to believe any of them. So, like, listen to me, but don't assume anything I say is necessarily true. There are all kinds of questions you could ask while I'm talking. You could say, how do you know? Who says? Who says your experience is the definitive one? Why do you want me to think this way? Who else could give me some perspective on this issue? That's what it means to question things, asking the right questions. Not necessarily to find the truth exactly, depending whether that's even ascertainable, but at least to move closer to the truth. So what do I mean by social institutions? Well, I could give you a boring dictionary definition, or I could just list them right now. So, let's say, government, the police, the military, democracy, human rights, the rule of law, authority itself, judges, prisons, the media, corporations, bosses, banks, school, university, money, property, charity, religion, countries, just their very existence, culture and all of its aspects, ideology, race and racism, which is not universal, not eternal, not natural, has a history, gender and gender roles, same thing, family, marriage, relationships, community, you get the point. <laughs> of course, I'm not about to talk about all of these institutions in one video, that's why I have a channel. Um, I'll talk about some examples and draw some kind of general lessons from them. Now, not all questioning is a good use of your time. For instance, it's, it's fine to question your loving relationship with, you know, your boyfriend or whatever, but what if there really is nothing wrong? So just be happy together. You can spend your energy questioning other things. Before we go any further, Let's learn what, what I told them was the magic word. The magic word is why. Now, of course, as kids, uh, if, if you're a native English speaker, you, you've probably learned that the magic word is please. But as an adult, you might realize it's not. <laughs> why is much more powerful. But parents, you know, they don't always like their kids asking why. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because children can be pretty annoying sometimes, you know, they say like, why is this that way? And, and you say, well, it's because of these things and those things. And then you, why? Well, because of all these things. Why? Well, because of this other thing. Why? Are you even listening to me? Why? Oh, shut up, damn kid. <laughs> 
I could understand that. But it's also because parents don't have the answer to every why, do they? And admitting that they don't have the answers shatters the authority that they seem to uh, that they seem to want to give themselves. But I'm not your dad, so please, ask why. With each of the institutions that I listed, you can ask why it exists. You can look at its history. You can read widely on the subject. Don't be satisfied with just one answer. If you ask your parents why you have to go to school, they'll tell you it's so you can learn. But I'm a teacher, and I bet almost any kid could learn more if it sat in a library reading books or watching videos on topics it's interested in on YouTube than to listening to me lecture. But your parents went to school, so they don't question it. And they don't want you to question it either. But why is not the only question that's worth asking? You could ask all kinds of other questions. Some of them are pretty powerful. Like, how do you know? Who says so? Why should I? Just those three questions used correctly can bring down almost anyone who wants to really look like an authority. In my opinion, Questioning the dominant institutions of our time is one of the most important things we can do in our lives. If we don't question things before we act, our actions could be based on a lie. Our whole lives could be based on a lie. Think of police or soldiers who terrorize people because they think they're doing it for their country. Hey, if you've been told your whole life that being a soldier is an act of love, and you'll, you're going to believe it. The people in power need soldiers, so they tell us at every turn, in school, in the news, everywhere, that soldiers defend their country and that that's a good thing. So a million young Americans watched 9-11 happen 18 years ago and then signed up to go kill people in Iraq. In Iraq! What kind of ridiculous logic is that? 9-11 had nothing to do with Iraq. And of course, a lot of the soldiers who went to Iraq now get all the lies that they were told. But it's too late. Something like a million people died in the invasion of Iraq, and it's still causing the survivors all kinds of problems. When you don't question these things, you become a servant of the people in power. When you learn to question, you can defend yourselves against psychological manipulation. And it's also, questioning is just how progress is made in general. Again, I was speaking to STEM students. They need to know that only by questioning the dominant narratives can we discover something new and better. So, 20 years ago, I went to Uruguay on a cultural exchange program. In Uruguay, I got my first peek into the world outside the one culture that I was familiar with. Looking back, I realized the main thing I've always loved about learning about culture is learning different perspectives. Learning a new perspective means learning a new way of thinking. And you can do that by experiencing a new culture. When people think of culture, they, they often just think of clothes and food and holidays and so on. But as I said in my video on the subject of culture, it's so much more than that. Take a look at this picture here. Um, you could even pause it to take a longer look if you like. Culture is about how we see the world. More than anything, it's the beliefs and assumptions we share, especially the things we never think to question. All these social institutions that I listed depend on culture. People from different cultures, or just anyone who's learned to think differently and question things, can give you a different perspective on social institutions. 
Culture and the effects of these institutions on our lives is like water to a fish. You just don't notice them. They're reality. But reality changes all the time. Who's to say we can't change or eliminate social institutions if, after questioning them, we find they're not in our interest? I can think of all kinds of beliefs I've grown up with that are dangerous to me and the people that I care about. So, of course, I like to shake up everyone's beliefs on those subjects. One more thing about culture and learning about new cultures. One thing I've learned about going to a new place is don't have any expectations. In other words, don't think that you know anything about the place or what's going to happen to you there because probably you don't. I find almost everything people expect or assume is wrong. Oh, I thought uh, all the women here were a certain way. Yeah, because you didn't know anything about it before, and you just believed in an image. But our image of something is never a complete picture of it. It takes a long time to be able to see this whole iceberg. Our image might be completely wrong. It usually comes from someone else. Think of the institutions that I listed here, and think how much direct experience you actually have with them. How do you know what, let's say, government is, and what it does? Well, mostly we see pictures and read words, first in school, then in the media. Someone else is always giving us our image to believe in. Jacques Ellul, I love that name, Ellul, in his book, Propaganda, uh, writes that propaganda must be total. It's a matter of encircling the whole person and all people. Think about what that means. He's warning us that everything we think, all our beliefs, are manufactured for us by propagandists, who nowadays, of course, we usually call public relations, or spokespeople, to paint a full picture of what they want us to think life is like. So everything can appear normal, no matter how bad for you, no matter how strange it seems to outsiders, because normal means invisible. Normal means unconscious. That's why outsiders or strangers are so important. They can teach us to see. They can wake us up. But they face a pretty big challenge. If you've been listening to propaganda all your life, like all of us have, you already have a full set of beliefs. Beliefs about all social institutions and how they're supposed to work. Almost everyone I know thinks government is supposed to work for the people, and they simply don't understand why it doesn't. Most of them aren't ready to hear that government, maybe, was never supposed to work for us. They've got all kinds of excuses for the people in power, and yet they can't learn from their experiences if their experiences don't force them to question things. Anything that goes against the beliefs they've been given must be wrong. Of course my country is the best country. Of course my religion is the right one. Of course these social institutions exist for my benefit. Right? And if you don't know what questions to ask, like why, or who says so, or what's in it for me, Everything normal stays invisible. Humans have this bias that makes it hard for us to change our beliefs, especially if we've had them for a long time. But of course, I didn't know all this 20 years ago. If I had, I would have had a very different experience at university. So I went back to Canada after Uruguay, and I started going to university. Eventually, I decided to major in political science. Now, don't let the name fool you. There's nothing scientific about studying politics. Or, if there is, 
it's not what they talk about in mainstream political science. We learned mostly a bunch of theories about how things work and how to argue in favor of each of them. So if there's something I know a bit about, I can make an argument for or against it. But the problem is, we never applied our theories and our logic to the big picture. For example, I, I could, back then, I could debate whether or not it's practical to use the military to fight terrorists. But there are much bigger and better questions we should be asking that we never did. Like, why do people get called terrorists? Why should we believe these people are terrorists? Or that the word terrorism is as evil as they want us to think it is? What are they not telling us? And how can I find out? In political science, we learned this ability to argue, but with no really firm understanding of what we were arguing for. In the end, we, we came out with all kinds of excuses for the status quo. But I was still interested in the subjects I had started to learn about in university, like politics, history, economics, philosophy, psychology, so I kept reading. Soon after I graduated, Facebook came out. Now, I don't know what you use Facebook for, but I've been using it for about 12 years now, mostly to learn. I follow people who post things that interest me, and I learn new things every day. I follow my curiosity. One thing Facebook taught me, or, well, let's say, one thing I learned from the people I follow on Facebook, is how to unlearn. I'm sure you know the word unlearn already, to learn about how something you think is actually wrong. <laughs> it means changing your beliefs, upgrading them from definitely wrong to less wrong, or um, to closer to correct, let's say. You don't have to be sure of everything. Soon after Facebook came along, and a couple of years after I graduated, I moved to China. Now, I went to China with a bunch of preconceived notions, believing in things like human rights and democracy, because I studied political science, and that's what it taught us. It also taught us to think you could easily divide countries into democratic and undemocratic countries. Countries where human rights are upheld and countries that are bad. China must be bad. Simplistic. And of course, yeah, the Chinese government does all kinds of, uh, cause all kinds of problems for its people. But so do all governments everywhere. That's a new way of thinking that I learned from living in China. Something is this way, but... Um, China is this way, but so are other places. Or so is Canada, where I'm supposed to be from. Or this is strange to me, but then maybe it actually makes perfect sense. Or this is strange to me, but then people from Canada are equally strange for a different reason. I'll give you the example of what started me thinking this way, challenging my thinking. It's actually quite a mundane example. When I got to China, it was, it was summer and it was really hot, and I noticed, despite the heat, everybody was drinking hot water. I couldn't understand it, and I thought, so people drink hot water all year round at first. That's so weird. But then almost, you know, because I value fairness, I almost immediately challenged that and thought, but wait, where I'm from, people drink cold water at all times of the year. So so over there, they, they drink hot water even in hot weather. But in somewhere else, they drink cold water even in cold weather. And 
So I learned, just, just from that example, I learned how to challenge my thoughts. When you get a thought, you can challenge it immediately. At least then you have more chances of being right. People are always this way, except when they aren't. Or maybe, maybe they're not like that at all. Maybe I'm wrong. It's always possible. I got married in China, and when I went back to Canada afterwards, I got divorced. <laughs> and because I was used to practicing critical thinking and questioning things uh, at that time, I kind of immediately started thinking critically about marriage. I asked myself the magic word, you know, why? Why did I get married in the first place? Why would I want to get married again? And I reached some conclusions. It doesn't matter. I, I don't need to influence your beliefs on marriage because it's up to you to decide if it's in your interest. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Of course, I should have questioned it before I got married. But hey, some lessons you learn the hard way, right? About eight years ago, Pretty soon after I got back from China, in 2011, I went to Egypt. What was happening in Egypt and the wider Middle East at that time? Do you know? Revolution, comrades! I got to see all the things that I had been studying, like a popular revolt and a police state's violent reaction to it. I got to see places with no police, also that we're doing just fine. I was talking to people online at that time who told me places without police would be chaos. And I could tell them from experience that that wasn't true. A few years earlier, I would have been the person saying it would be chaos. In Egypt, I started my blog, which is called The Rule of Freedom. I thought of myself as very well informed on the right subjects to have a loud opinion on everything. But I still had so much to learn. So people corrected me about everything. And sometimes I would argue and fight, but what they said still influenced me. I also realized that this time I was unlearning a lot of what I had learned in university about all those subjects, history, politics, economics, and so on. But a lot of the things I was learning at that time were wrong too. So now, again, I'm still unlearning. And what that means is my blog, which I started eight years ago, is full of stuff I don't even believe anymore. Well, you live and learn. Sometimes people tell me things too five, ten times before I understand or agree with what they're telling me. Those people have been great, essential, for making me doubt my beliefs and helping me unlearn. We tend to think of doubt as bad. But why? Because we have to be sure of everything? The truth is often ambiguous. We should learn to live with ambiguity and doubt. Sometimes I've had doubts and immediately crushed them. No! No! Bad doubt! Everything I think is true! <laughs> but if you doubt something, it might be for a good reason. Remember I was saying if you're in a happy relationship, you don't need to question it? Well. I was in an unhappy relationship, and I refused to question it. I refused to listen to my doubts, and in the end, it was that much more painful as a result. I was in Egypt for five years, and when I came back to Canada, I was bringing new perspectives with me. I'd spent years of learning and unlearning. I was seeing Canada with new eyes. And I don't feel the same way about it anymore. I realize now Canada is a settler colonial state that exists largely to oppress the native people and take their resources. I could never have understood that growing up in 
all white neighborhoods like I did. I walk along streets with names of European colonizers wondering how the indigenous people feel about it, and about me. I see police kicking homeless people out of public spaces where they're sleeping. I see people living in poverty. I never saw poverty before. I've had to learn to see it. Before, it was normal, invisible, part of how things work. But since I've been away, I've realized poverty is made by humans. It only exists in these artificial systems like capitalist states. It's not inevitable. None of these social institutions are inevitable. Some of them can be changed and made to work for us. Some of them can be thrown away. And because I've had the privilege of learning and unlearning so much, I've always wanted to spread my knowledge and perspective and ideas to other people. So, this year I started my two YouTube channels. And now I look like an authority. So surely that means you should question me, right? So how do you think you could question the things that I've said here or anything that I say on this channel? I'll let you figure that out. Either way, if you want to chat about any of these topics from now until the day I die, let me know. Let's talk. See you next week.